So in this segment, I would like to talk about the modeling patterns that are related to the software integration problems. And at the very high level, this is a problem where you break your system up into multiple software components. You have uh, teams work on them individually, and then you integrate them into top level application at the operating system level. So, but be before we get to the modeling patterns, let us first look at the typical workflow that you are using. So the first step uh, you have is to create a Simulink model for each software component. So we have one, two software component here. Next step, you just reference them in the top model for simulation. And after that, you build the uh, simulation environment around the components. For example, you can add the plant model. You can also add the more detailed level for your operating system or runtime environment. So then you proceed to simulate the integration model. After behavior, behavior looks right, you can now proceed to generate code. And the way you do that is usually to generate code from each individual component model. Then you collect the entry point functions from each component. And then in the, in the operating system, you have predefined slots for the event handlers as well as the periodic tasks. So the final step is to integrate those entry point functions into the operating systems. So, um, and for conciseness, from now on, we will call those entry point functions the partitions. So how do you create partitions in Simulink today? For that, you have two modeling styles available today. The first one is called the export function model. In this style, the partitions are defined by the function called root imports, where the function names are defined by the import names themselves. The next style is called a rate-based model. In this style, the partitions are defined by rates. For example, you have one partition for the 10 milliseconds, twin, another for 20 milliseconds, and finally another one for the asynchronous rate. So now that you know how to define the partitions, how do you model the software integration? The most common pattern we have seen from you is called the scheduling pattern. In this pattern, all the components are implemented using export function models. At the very top level, you have the uh, scheduler block to mimic the scheduling operation of the operating system or the runtime environment. As you can see here, this pattern only works with the export function model. What if you don't use the export function model? What would your integration model look like? Probably something like this. So you just bring the component and co uh, connect them up in the top model. But a lot of times when you uh, connect them in a loop like this, Simulink will just throw an algebraic loop error. And just like the old riddle, Simulink just can't figure out whether chicken should come before egg or vice versa. <laughs> but when you look at this model as your uh, software integration model, um, you do know how to schedule the partition so the algebraic loop really doesn't make any sense. You insist that there's no loop here. But also, because you want to use the rates as the partitions, you kind of wish that you can uh, schedule the rates yourself. So we hear this concern. Um, in our 2017B, we provide a new option on the model block for you to adapt rates to function call. With this new option, you're now in full control. For example, um, in the periodic task, 10 milliseconds, you can make chicken execute before egg. <laughs> And in the 22nd 20 second, 20 second millisecond task, uh, you can make egg execute before chicken. So with this new option comes a new possibility. That is because you have seen the export function model and the rate-based model, and you have seen that all kinds of partitions, whether it's rate or function call, are now schedulable. So you should be able to mix them together in the same integration model. And that is absolutely correct, as shown in this example. So we have one component here implemented using export function model, and another implemented using the rate-based model. And the rate-based model has been adapted using the new uh, option in 17B. So you can see here that the scheduler block, uh, there's only one scheduler block to handle them both. And with this come a few more benefits. First, maybe you don't have to worry about working with someone who don't use the same modeling style anymore. 
Uh, the second one is maybe you can also reuse the IPs you have built previously using rate-based model. The scheduling pattern can also be used to simulate startup and shutdown. To do this, let's take the previous example. First, you can turn on the initialize and terminate port on the model block. Um, and for export function, this is already available in 16B. We provide the same thing for the rate-based model in 17B. So now you can go back to the top model and uh, extend your scheduler to take care of the initialize and terminate event. Once you have done this, you can see the behavior of the plan before the controller and the estimator components are turned on. And once again, after they are turned off and turned back on again through uh, a power cycle simulation. So in summary, the scheduling pattern is flexible and powerful because you can schedule all the partitions any way you want, you won't get any algebraic loop. It now works with rate-based model in our 2017B, so that lets you collaborate with more companies and or even within your own organization. You can simulate a startup shutdown with a scheduling pattern or even build your own semantics wherever your ideas might take you. And I hope you like it. Thank you. <laughs>